Hi guys, so I want to make a quick video here for you where I review the documents that you're using to write your essay. So I'm really only doing this because the weather's been so weird uh, and I think that you guys would benefit from a little bit of review um, just so that we're all on the same page. So all I'm going to do guys uh, is go through each document one at a time and I'm going to give you the main idea or a quick summary of the document. Okay, so we'll start here with document A. This is that chart that shows who could be citizens in both Athens and Rome. And the main idea here is just that more people could be citizens in Rome. If you lived in Rome, basically you could be a citizen so long as you weren't a slave. That includes women and children. In Athens, you could only be a citizen if you were a man and even more so if you were Athenian. You had to be Greek. Okay, so Athens, not as many people can be citizens. Okay, so then let's look at document B. So in document B, we have a short speech here. Uh, and in that speech, uh, the old oligarch, who is a historian, uh, is arguing that it should be the poor people in Athens who have power. And he thinks that's the case because they served in the Navy. So it's the poor people who run the Navy, and the Navy is what makes Athens powerful. That's how Athens is able to defend itself. So he's arguing that the poor people of Athens should have power, uh, and this turns out to be true. The poor people in Athens did have a lot of power that they did not have in Rome. Okay, so let's look over here then at document C. So in document C, uh, Claudius is the author of this. He's an emperor. And his argument, his main idea is this. So uh, the Roman people, his people, uh, let anyone that they conquered be citizens. So when they would go take over a country, they would let those people be citizens, even if those people had a different culture or had a different language. Uh, whereas in Athens, as we saw back in document A, only Greek people could be citizens. Uh, it's a little bit more complex than that, but the short version is that the Romans were willing to let a lot more people be citizens, even when they had a different culture. Whereas the Greeks, you had to be Greek, okay? Okay, so then let's look here at document D. So the main idea, there's two things here actually in document D, but I can summarize the main idea um, this way. So in Rome, they ranked people according to the wealth, uh, according to their wealth and their family. So if you were from a famous family or you were wealthy, you would be ranked higher. We call this a class, class system. Um, and so they would rank people based on uh, their wealth and their family and some other things about them as well. Okay. And you had to be high in rank to participate in government in Rome. You had to be from the upper class, meaning that you were rich and that you had a good family. In Athens, again, um, you had to be Greek, but so long as you were Greek and male, you could participate in government, even if you weren't rich and even if you didn't come from a famous family. Okay, so that's the short version of document D. So then we're going to look at document E and document F. That's these two pictures here. So this is F, and then over here, this is E. And I'm going to give you the main idea of both of these. Uh, it's actually very similar to what we just said in document D. So summarizing E and F, I can tell you this. In Athens, every citizen got to vote. They would have these big assemblies. That's what we see in the picture here. And everybody got to vote in the assembly. Again, had to be male, but any Greek men could participate in that assembly, okay? In Rome, you still had to be male. It's a pretty sexist place, okay? But even more so, you had to be rich. So in Rome, only the rich, it was actually about 300 people, got to make decisions in a very small Senate. And that's what you see here. So we have just a few people, about 300 people, and they would get together and make all the important decisions. Compare that to Athens, where we have a much bigger group, and actually all 40,000 people in Athens could come and participate in government. Okay. So those are the documents, guys. That's, again, just a quick summary of those. Uh, if you're 
still confused, you might want to go back and rewatch the video or raise your hand and talk to me um, because you will need those main ideas in order to finish your essays. So I hope that helps, guys. Just a quick review uh, and good luck writing. Thanks.